afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord, your God is with you, wherever you go. Be strong and courageous. This day, the Lord is with you wherever you go. Praise God for another good episode. Talk about the greatness of our God. And today you can believe that God is a God who wants to bring victory into your life. Amen. 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 Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Jesus said that He is with you always and He will never leave you nor forsake you. You don't have to worry about, I'm alone, I'm afraid, nobody's with me. You know, if you're a born again child of God, you don't need to speak words like that. You need to start saying, the Lord is with me. Whom shall I be afraid of? We talked about it last time. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? Don't be afraid when people look at you and they say things against you. Trust in the greatness of your God. He is with you. He will never leave you, nor forsake you. Yeah, and when you magnify the greatness of your God, you're going to see those mountains, those hindrances that have been um, in the way of your life, they're going to come down. Because magnifying the greatness of your God begins, will cause you to start seeing victory, it will cause you to start seeing um, overcoming situations. And that's exactly what God wants you to be in life, is a victorious person. Mm -hmm. God didn't create defeats. No, He didn't. He didn't create defeats. Victors. He created victors. And you know, this, the words of this song actually come from the book of Joshua. Let's turn to that. It's really interesting. You know, um, Joshua was another mighty man of God, just like David. You know, we saw last time about how David spoke words of victory and how the giant came down yeah. as a result of his words of faith. It didn't come because he was a boy who had been in battle. He had never been in battle before, mm. but he just knew who God was in his life. Right. And he started to speak that even in the midst of intimidation, and fear all around him and yeah. God gave him the victory and you know Joshua is another mighty man of God that uh, proclaimed victory in his life uh, throughout many situations that he faced let's read first of all the, the words of this song come from the book of Joshua chapter 1 mm. and uh, it comes from verse 6 Joshua start reading. was a man yeah. in, in the Old Testament um, there were these the group uh, of people they were the people of God and God led them mightily and strongly out of so many hardships 
and God used a man named Moses initially to lead these people mm. of God but it came to a time where Moses had passed away and now these people of God they needed a new leader and so God comes to Joshua who was a help uh, helper of Moses as well and he comes and says now Joshua it's time for you to rise up so let's read these scriptures yeah. that's that's the back story of where this yeah. is coming from in fact Joshua was the new leader of the children of Israel and you know probably he would have probably missed you know mo having Moses around him mm. and so he probably would have been in this place of still mourning about Moses you know gone and at that moment God gives him this promise It comes from Joshua chapter 1 verse 6 it says God tells to Joshua be strong and of good courage that's powerful that's just the first part of that verse be strong and of good courage mm. now let's read verse 7 God repeats himself and says only be strong and very courageous. Yeah. Okay, let's go on to verse 9. We're just reading these parts where where God says to be strong and courageous. In mm. verse 9 God tells Joshua, "Have I not commanded you?" Now God is like really strong here. He's like, "I'm commanding you, Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go." Amen. I and mean, how awesome is that? God repeats mm. himself Sometimes when you see the Bible um when God repeats himself he definitely wants you to get what he's saying. Yeah. When he keeps repeating himself, God keeps mm. saying be strong and of good courage. Mm. That means he means it. And I suppose probably at this time um Joshua would have been very discouraged, yeah. Mm. Very disheartened mm. because he had just lost a great leader Moses yeah. and you know what what I noticed in this whole chapter is you don't find Joshua speaking at all. but you just find god constantly encouraging him mm. and that's why he's saying so many times be strong and courageous only be strong and courageous have i not commanded you be strong and courageous yeah he is coming against that spirit of discouragement that was in joshua i suppose he would have been very discouraged mm. i mean having moses lead you for a long time and going through so much of things and you're not the one who's taking the initiative somebody else is but now here it's up to you it's up to Joshua to do it yeah. and so god is coming against the spirit of discouragement and saying only be strong Joshua don't be discouraged mm. and um i like what it says in verse 9 have i not commanded you god is saying this to Joshua i'm giving you a command it's not a suggestion it's not an option if you want to you be strong if you want to you be courageous mm. no it's a command The Lord is saying if you want to succeed in life you're going to have to be strong. Mm. And the powerful thing is if you see in even in Ephesians God talks about being strong. Mm. But he says be strong in the Lord. Yeah. So are we just going to be strong in our own might, in our own ability, in our skills and our talents and our abilities? No, God says be strong mm. in the Lord. Yeah. You can mark the scripture in Ephesians 6 verse 10. He says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So I believe God was strengthening Joshua here and saying you're not going to do this alone. And in verse 5 also Yeah. Uh, it's it says there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. That is really encouraging. That is so powerful. God yeah. is saying I will be with you. I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. Yeah. That's you can the first count way. on God. Yeah. You can count on him. I mean, that is the first way that you can be strong is yeah. knowing that God will never leave you nor forsake you. That mm. should be one of the promises you confess and say almost every yeah. time or every moment of remembrance that you you think about it, God you're with me. You're not mm. left me. You know, you're never going to leave my side. That's the promise that God has given us. When Jesus comes to live on the inside of you, He's never going to leave you. You mm. have this assurance forever throughout your lifetime that he's going to be with you. Yeah. And God tells this to Joshua. This is actually a very encouraging verse, you know, when you yeah. see when you read this, this should bring so much of hope into you. God tells to Joshua, "As I was with Moses, so I will be with you." Right? How cool is that? I mean, God tells God in tell Joshua, "Well, I've I've had a long number of years with Moses." I think it's time up for for you to do this alone. God mm. didn't say that. No. He says as I was with Moses, as I was with him throughout that whole journey of 40 years, mm. I'm going to be with you. I will mm. not fail you 
I'll forsake you. Yeah. And if you go back reading from verse 9 down there again, he says, um, the last part says, Don't be afraid, don't be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's right. Now this is very important that you know that. For you to be strong and courageous, one of the first ways is have this assurance that God is never going to leave you. He's going to be with you. If God is with you, that means you have strength working mm -hmm. from within you. Yeah. You will have courage. Protection. Yeah. I mean, the names of God is so amazing. God is our Father. He's our strength. He's our refuge. He'll be all these to you. We're going to talk more about how you can be strong and courageous. But be encouraged. One of the first ways is knowing that He's going to be with you and He's never going to leave you. So we were talking just now about the scripture in the book of Joshua, chapter 1 and how God was strengthening this man named Joshua and encouraging him, be not afraid, don't be discouraged. The Lord your God is with you. I'm going to be with you. I'm not going to fail you. I'm not going to leave you or forsake you. As I was with Moses, the leader who has gone before mm. you, so I'm going to be with you. Yeah. So be encouraged, you too also. Take these words and say, Lord, you are with me. You will never leave me nor forsake mm. me. If you are in a discouraging situation right now, this is going to be an encouragement to you. The Lord is with you. Keep saying that over and over again. And declare it out of your mouth. See, that's the power of speaking God's word. When you speak it over and over again, you're building faith on the inside mm. of you. And when you build faith on the inside of you, you're going to get stronger and you're going to see it becoming a reality in your life. God is with me. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. Mm. He won't fail me. Or forsake me. Yeah, I love those words in Joshua 1 5 where, where God tells to Joshua, I will not fail you, nor will I forsake you. Hmm. There's a scripture in the New Testament where Jesus tells his disciples before he goes away, he assures them and says, Lo, I am with you even unto the end of the world. And that is such an encouragement. I am with you till the end of the world. Hmm. That should bring so much of hope to you. I mean, if you can't get hope anywhere else, go to the Bible, go to the Word of God. That is the most encouraging book ever this book right. right here is full of hope it's mm -hmm. full of promises of victory because we yes. live in a world that's very discouraged and um, a world Hopeless. that's always people have hope but people people most of them don't have any hope in their mm. life so where are you going to turn to to get hope otherwise you might say well what's the reason of living if there's no hope yeah but it's if you realize popular. if you have god on your side and knowing who jesus truly is you're going to have a life of hope. Hmm. You don't have to live a life just because every day passes by and you got to live. You can live a life with courage and expecting to see victory. Because that is faith. That's right. That's very important. Hmm. So be encouraged that God's never going to leave you. So uh, let's keep reading the book of Joshua. We're going to read from verse um, 2. Another point I just yeah, want to make go on to that first. from this. When God was encouraging Joshua, he was saying, be strong. And then we pointed out last time in Ephesians, God says, be strong in the Lord mm. and in the power of his might. Yeah. You notice you are supposed to be strong in the Lord, not in your own might, your abilities and your strength. Mm. Be strong in the Lord, in who God is, yeah. because he is a big God. And I also wrote down here, your strength does not come from men. Yeah. Your strength does not come from the people around you, from your own abilities. Your strength comes from God. In Psalm 46, 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength. Mm. He is a very present help in time of trouble. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. And that's what was happening right here with Joshua. God was his refuge and strength. And he was saying, I'm your very present help in time of trouble. I'm going to be with you. I'm not going to fail you. Yeah, that's very important. Yeah. In fact, if you read verse 2 in Joshua chapter 1 verse 2, hmm. God, um, this is what God says to Joshua. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now arise and go over this Jordan and you and all these people unto the land that I'm going to give you, even to the children of Israel. Now what can we get from that verse? The word arise is what stands out in this verse. God is telling Joshua to arise. Because yes. why is God telling Josh? When you think of the word arise, you think of um, getting up out of something, hmm. right? Arise and wake up or get up. And God is telling Joshua, arise. Moses is dead. I mean, you know, sometimes um, many of us don't want to arise to, to the future because we're still living in the past. Mm -hmm. We're still living in what has happened. 
and things of the past and we're defining ourselves by the way we were brought up and we don't want to arise when God tells us that, you yeah. know, when he tells us to do something. Or it could be the other way around. You have had great victories in the past, but now, like Joshua, Moses, his previous leader, is dead. And he's wondering, my, how is this all going to, you know, continue? Mm. You've had great victories in the past. You've seen God deliver you out of so many things. And now what? Moses is dead. Maybe this is the situation in your life. You're mm. experiencing something like this. But God is saying here to Joshua, and he's saying the same thing to you. Yeah. Arise. Arise and go over this Jordan, you and the people. Yeah. For I, uh, unto the land that I'm going to give you, arise. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm also reminded of that other scripture in the New Testament, in Philippians. Paul, an apostle of God, he talks about it, and he says, forget the things that are behind. Yeah. You know, not, he says in... Um, yeah, he says it so beautifully in Philippians 3, 13. Mm. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended or understood everything. Or oh, I'm not just this all intelligent person. Mm. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Yeah. You have to forget the things that are behind and reach forth to the things that are before. That's right. If your mind is always on what used to be, what has happened, all the good times we've had, and all the bad things that have happened, you will not be able to reach forward to the good things that God has for you. Your mind will be in the past. And you know, sometimes, uh, there was a time when these people of God in the Old Testament, their mind was in the back, yeah. in the past. All the, you know, the things that happened in the past, it wasn't very, good for them because they came out of a life of slavery out yeah. of bondage but their mind was and, and when they faced especially when they faced hardship they kept you know going back and oh what if we had lived there in the past yeah. what if all this had happened but notice you will never be able to get into your future into the things that god has for you if you're constantly remembering the past that's right and you may have had victories but now it's time to move forward yeah. because god has good things for you you got to have an expectant attitude for the future yeah you you cannot always you know begin to see that you know this is just another day and nothing's good ever can happen to me now it would, like shalom said about all the victories are in the past the good times were in the past. Mm. Refuse to believe that. Because if you if you take Joshua as an example, Joshua obeyed actually God's commandments, everything God told Joshua, he obeyed. And he had even greater victories than Moses. Mm. You, yeah. you know, your past is a good thing to look back. If, if you have had victories in your past, it's a good thing to look back and say, the Lord who was with me then is yeah. still going to be the God who is now. If you ever have to look at the past, look at the victories and be thankful and say, Lord, what you did for me then, you will still do now. But don't look back in regret and, you know, think, oh, everything is lost now. Mm. We have nothing to look forward to. Yeah. But arise and move forward in the greatness of God. Yeah. In fact, David says in one of the Psalms, he says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Mm. And, uh, who, and then he goes on talking about the benefits of God. He heals all my diseases. He forgives all my iniquities. Amen. And he, he's actually, he's saying, you know, I'm going to bless the Lord for all the victories I've had in the past. He's not talking about wish he could go back to the past and or he's neither is he talking about, you know, I've never had a good past. He's just he's saying, Lord, I thank you for all those victories that you've given me. I'm going to thank you and I'm going to praise you. So if ever the past comes to your mind, just remember about the victories you've had. Mm. And if the past has never been a good one for you, say, Lord, I'm not, I'm not going to. I'm not going to look at the way it's been. Yes. I'm going to start seeing myself the way you want me to see myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to rise up. I'm going to see victory for my future, even yeah. if I've never seen victory. Mm. Another point that we can find in the book of Joshua and the, in the story that we're reading right now is that God is never a quitter. Yeah, that's good. God is never a quitter. When Moses failed, God didn't quit leading the children of Israel. Mm. You no, know, whenever you make a mistake, don't think that God will leave you and forsake you and forget you. Yeah. Remember this, God is a faithful God. Mm. He is never a quitter. He never. has never lost and he will never lose. He is a winner always and he wants your life to be a life full of victories. Mm. So God is never a quitter. Think back even in the life of Adam and Eve, you know, in the Garden of Eden, when they messed up, they made a mistake. God didn't give up on them. 
In fact, he searched for them. He called out to them. They were in the hiding and they were afraid. But God looked out, uh, looked out for them. And mm. God said, where are you? Because he was still interested in building that relationship with them. God is never a quitter. Yeah. Another characteristic of God that we find about God not being a quitter is that he's patient. That's right. He's long suffering. He will bear with you. Even if you make a mistake, he will forgive you and give you more chances. Mm. He's a faithful God. Yeah. You know what? If you think about quitting, it's a sign of instability. Yeah. You know, you're you're making one decision, then you give up on that, then you move into something else, or you do this and you do several things. You're instable. But don't be a quitter. Be like God and be consistent. That's right. Be consistent. Or uh, don't quit. You know, if, if God has given you a promise, know that He is faithful mm. to be with you. Just like Joshua, He said, Arise, I am with you, I won't fail you. Be strong and courageous. Don't quit because That's you right. have a God who won't give up on you. And never quit when it's hard. You know, mm. God. When you see, even though the children of Israel were so stubborn and many times when he, when he was bringing them out, they, they were at times praising him, but then other times they were complaining. Even then, God didn't quit on them. Yes. He still loved them and showed his mercy. Although some of them had to face terrible things because of their own complaining, we see that God still, he stuck with them and he stood with them mm -hmm. even throughout that whole time. Patience. So be encouraged this day. God is never going to quit on you. He's going to always be with you and he's going to strengthen you. From the moment that you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, He's going to be with you throughout the rest of your life. And also, He has great victories for you. But you've got to stick with His word and speak His words of faith. And you can expect a victorious future for your life.